Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Walkersville, Maryland. We are glad you're here with us in person and online. A few announcements. First of all, Lenten worship continues this Wednesday, preceded by soup and sandwich at 6 in the overflow area, and then worship at 7, so we ask that you would join us for that. We had seven people join us at Cactus Flats this past Friday for fellowship, conversation, and just an all-around good time, and we will be doing that consistently through Lent on every Friday. So we start at 5 o'clock, and I think we're there till 7.30-ish this past week, so if you're going to be late, that's fine. Come when you can. Council and others met yesterday for their annual retreat, and they discussed uh, spiritual gifts and the Enneagram, which is a personality typing thing. Um, I didn't agree with mine, but, you know. <laughs> and, and the group would like to uh, offer that to the congregation, so keep your eye out uh, for that to be offered, and we'll be doing that sometime in the future. Uh, next, week for worship, next week, I will be leading worship at Bethel as well as here at St. Paul's. So that's part of our ongoing discernment as to how we may partner in ministry. So we'll see how that goes. Directories are available. All you do, need to do is contact the office and we'll get you one, whether electronically or we'll get you a hard copy. Call Joanne and she'll get you squared away. And then we are participating in the Evangelical Lutheran Church's 40 Days of Giving towards the ELCA Hunger. Sheila is leading that off. Um, so there's a big full-page spread in the bulletin about that. Or if you have questions, get a hold of Sheila. Now let's quiet our hearts for worship.
Please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God. Your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with your neighbor. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the
Let us pray. Lord God, our strength, the struggle between good and evil rages within and around us, and the devil and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word, and when we fall, raise us again and restore us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading for the first Sunday of Lent comes from the second chapter of Genesis, verses 15 to 17, and chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. The introduction. The annual harvest festival, called the Feast of Weeks, provides this setting for this reading. The festival celebrates the first fruits of the produce of the land, offered back to God in thanks. In this text, worshipers Worshippers announce God's gracious acts on behalf of Israel. The first reading. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden. 
but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat it, eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord, Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you, you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat, it, eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed together fig leaves, and made loincloths for themselves. Here ends the first reading, the word of the Lord. Today's psalm is Psalm 32, read responsively by the half verse. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven. And whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt. And in whose spirit there is no guile. While I hold my tongue, my bones withered away. Because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule, which have no understanding. Who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked. But mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you're righteous, and be glad you're righteous and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. The second reading for today comes from the fifth chapter of Romans, verses 9 to 12 to 19. The introduction. Paul reminds the Christians at Rome of the foundation of their creed the confession of faith in the risen Christ as Lord. The second reading. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned. Sin was, in, sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses even over those who sinned were not like the transgressions of Adam, who was a figure of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for of the many died through one man's trans trans trespass, much more surely will have the grace of God and the free gift of the, and the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought con condemnation. But the free gift following many transgressions, many trespasses, brings justification. If because of, of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, which more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, 
Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteousness. Here ends the second reading. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, Since you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, since you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor and said to them, All these I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of our Lord. And grace be unto you in peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Was Jesus tempted or tested in the wilderness, or was it both? Jesus was subject to the things human beings were as a result of his own humanity and was thusly put in those positions we experience in our everyday lives. And Jesus' humanity made him vulnerable to the frailties of our human condition. However, a savior who can't endure everyday temptation cannot save us, so there must be tests that go on to ensure he is up to the task. Can we trust God to give us everything we need? We embrace the fact we have limitations and are reliant on God. He empties himself, taking the form of a servant, and trusts in God. He doesn't do it by himself, yet through the power and relationship with God. God doesn't force himself on us. God allows us to work in the world through him. And we are free to live as God's children and not for ourselves. The word perazzo can mean either tempt or test. The, to tempt is to entice a person to do what is wrong. To test is to give a person the opportunity to choose what is right. To tempt is to hope for failure. To test is to hope for success. In Jesus' temptation, the Spirit is testing Jesus. The devil intends to tempt him, to compromise him and break him. But generally, when teachers or driving instructors or doctors give tests, 
they're not trying to flunk those who are being tested, but to help discover what they know and what they can do. And this is one way of looking at being tested by God. God wants Jesus and us to pass the test, to prove our abilities to God and to ourselves. Yet the devil has different plans to tempt or to try and cause us to make a mistake or to try and cause us to sin. Now the Holy Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness with the knowledge Jesus will not fail the test and become tempted by the devil. Jesus will further embrace God's mission for him and God's faith in the beloved Son will see Jesus through the powers of evil. And there are many instances in our scriptures pointing to God testing the faithful, the testing which grows our faith and gives us hope for the future. God's testing is not meant as a punishment, but as a way for us to understand we cannot do anything without God in our lives. God tested Abraham by demanding the life of Isaac. And after Abraham demonstrated his willingness to offer Isaac to God, God said, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you. And I will make your offspring as numerous of the stars of heaven and as of the sand that is on the seashore. God tested the Israelites in the wilderness. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you. Testing you to know what your heart is, whether or not you would keep his commandments. Israel failed the test. Going after other gods and reaping bitter fruit, God punished them, but did not abandon them. Punishment was intended to redeem instead of destroy. God allowed Satan to test Job, a very righteous man. Terrible calamities befell Job, who remained steadfast in his faith. God blessed Job by restoring his health, wealth, and family. And the examples of Abraham and Job provide us a clue to God's intent, a steadfast love and desire for relationship. God allows us to choose good or evil and hopes to bless the right choice. And even though we often fail, God is there to welcome us in retaking that test over and over again. Are we strong enough not to be tempted and accept the tests God puts before us? In our lesson for today, Jesus refuses the devil's push in the desert to turn stones into bread to satisfy his own hunger. But before long, he will feed thousands in the wilderness with just a few loaves and some fish. And he will teach his disciples to pray to God for their daily bread. Jesus is the true leader who puts others ahead of himself. He refuses to take advantage of his relationship to God by hurling himself down from the heights of the temple. Yet at the er earthly end of his ministry, he endures the taunts of others while putting his faith in God and completing his journey to the place of the skull and his death on the cross. He turns down the devil's offers of governance over kingdoms of the world and again offers the kingdom of the heavens to all of us who follow the path of God. The promise of the gospel is that the one who is with you always to the end of the age has already gone ahead of us, even to the most forsaken places of the wilderness, and he meets us in the most difficult tests in our lives. Individually, each temptation invites Jesus to turn away from trust in God in a different way. 
In the first, the devil invites Jesus to prove his sonship through a display of power, that is, by establishing his validity and worth through his own abilities. In the second, the temptation is to test God's fidelity. In the third, more an out-and-out bribe than temptation. Jesus has promised all the power and glory the earth can offer if he will give his allegiance and devotion to the tempter. So in each case, Jesus rejects the temptation and lodges his identity, future, and fortunes on God's character and trustworthiness. Jesus relied on God to provide for him and to give him the strength to endure the devil's temptation. Everything Jesus did was foundational in God. The one whom he said was well pleased that his beloved son had come to the waters of the Jordan. All along, God knew the tests put before Jesus would be passed with flying colors and the devil would have no stance. I would even say the devil knew his efforts were fruitless as he acknowledged who Jesus was from the very beginning. Since you are the Son of God, which is a translation to this text I much prefer. Since you are God's Son, is almost a goading to Jesus to fail, which we know will never happen. Are you tempted or tested? I believe it is fair to say that we, as Jesus was, are both tempted and tested, with our struggle being able to identify the difference. And this is something that I, that I have been tempted, this is something we have been doing differently and difficult, and the challenge is ongoing. Over the last couple of weeks, I have been tempted to share a secret Sue and I were included in, and it's been very difficult. As most of you know, we spent last weekend with eight of our closest friends, and so many times I wanted to blurt out the secret even though we had been asked not to. I passed the test and did not reel that confidential information with the group, even though it was right there on the tip of my tongue. And part of this test started just after Christmas, and I knew the challenges presented to the keeper of the secret and the challenges for them moving forward. Many prayers were lifted up, and silent prayers kept in my heart about this test. Not that we didn't know what was coming, but on Thursday night, we were blessed to be able to share that we were going to have a granddaughter. We are very excited and I'm glad my temptation led to testing an outcome with hope and joy. Perhaps the goal of the life of faith isn't to escape limitation, but to discover God amidst our needs and learn with Paul that God's grace is sufficient for us. Our faith doesn't do away with the hardships that come to us every day, but rather gives us the courage to stand amidst them. Not simply surviving, but actually flourishing in and through Jesus. The one who was tempted as we are and thereby knows our struggle firsthand provides us with a gift to be relished over and over again. And the gift we receive in God's testing, us, because God hopes for our future And by turning to God, we find both hope and courage. God who named Jesus as his beloved, as he names us. By taking in Jesus' example of turning to God for strength, we overcome temptation and the power of the devil. And we bathe in the glory of the cross as our stability in times of trial. Then the devil left him. And suddenly angels came and waited on him. Turn to God. Turn to God and resist temptation. Turn to God who will always give you a retest.
turn to God, and the angels will wait on you. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You alone are God. Sustain your church in times of wilderness. Give vision and wisdom to bishops, their staff, and all entrusted with the Ministry of Administration, especially Bishop Goal, Bishop Eaton, and Pastor Robin. Counsel all who faithfully lead your people into the future. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You create verdant gardens and expansive deserts. Tend to the needs of every living creature. 
Bless those who work in fields and orchards, that the world is nurtured by the fruits of their labor. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. You know our temptations. Sustain those who govern and legislate. Instill in them a sense of your justice and righteousness, that equity and peace would pervade all the regions and nations of the world. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. You are hiding, you are a hiding place for all in distress. Draw near to exiles and accompany all refugees and immigrants, especially children who travel alone. In times of trouble, trauma, or illness, surround your people with your steadfast love, especially Susan, Paul, Pat, Jonathan, Bruce, Bob, Gary, Michael, Kim, Roxanne B, Mike, Charlie, those on our prayer list and those whom we name in our hearts are out loud. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. you offer abundance to all. Bless the ministries of hospitality in this place. Care for those who tend to the needs of others, especially worship greeters, chat hosts, and faith formation teachers. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. You alone are God. We praise you for the faithful departed in every age. Unite our prayers with theirs until our wilderness journey is complete and we rest in you. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We're thankful for the gifts you share with your church. There are many ways for you to do so. It's the way we do church. So please give of yourself, your time, and your talents. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We offer you joy and thanksgiving, what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to the heal the sick and suffering, who preached the good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This is, cup is the new covenant in my blood, shared for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. And pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord. Unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Gathered into one with the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Welcome at Christ's table. Come as you are. The feast is prepared. The table is set. Come and eat.
Please stand as you're able. And may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Body God at your table, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. God, the great giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Go in peace, embrace the test, and serve in love. Thanks be to God.